What's up guys? Welcome back to Rule of Two Review. My name is Rob and if you guys remember on my one year anniversary celebration video I mentioned how I wanted to do a lot of movie related videos and topics and stuff going forward for this new year. Um, and what's really cool is my first and best opportunity to do so happens to be about Star Wars and I am beyond thrilled that that gets to be my first movie related video for this new year so I can start doing this stuff more and more often going forward. Um, no video content or anything to show. Obviously, it's another vlog format, so you do get to see my face again. I'm going to try not to do this as often as I, as I have been lately, so if you're sick of seeing my face, don't worry. You're not going to see it as often as you have been lately. So anyway, I'm talking about Star Wars. What is it that I'm talking about? Well, it's the reveal of the new title for Episode 7, which is called The Force Awakens. So that's been the big news the last couple of days. Um... It's really exciting, but also really confusing, because as the humongous, massive Star Wars fan that I am, I've been kind of trying to reconcile exactly how I feel about it, processing the information, and also even trying to process how important this is going to be at the end of the day. And um, there's so much for me to talk about here. Um, like I've said before, I am a huge Star Wars fan. Uh, I like to consider myself a real Star Wars fan because I enjoy the entire film saga. I like all six films. I think the prequels are just as great as the originals. Um, if I was to rank my six favorite films, they're in no particular order. I mean, you've got between the prequel and the original trilogy, it's, it's definitely a mixed match of where all the films fall within their respective timeline. So, <clears throat> I like all the films. Um, George Lucas is like my favorite person ever. I just, he's, I just love him so much for all the Star Wars goodness. So I have a very particular opinion and feeling going into this new trilogy. And it's not just a new film. It's the new trilogy. That's what I think a lot of people are forgetting to talk about. Um, I have not been in love with the fact that um, George Lucas sold the company to Disney when he retired. Um, I feel like that was an unfortunate move. It's probably the biggest mistake I think he ever made. Lucasfilm could have and should have been able to survive on its own, continuing on as its own entity like it always had been, leave the, leave the company in the capable hands of Kathleen Kennedy like he did, and it could have just gone from there, you know? And they didn't, and Disney is just... I love Disney, don't get me wrong, but I'm not sure how I feel about them being involved with Star Wars, and I haven't loved everything that they've done so far, but... It all still remains to be seen. Kathleen Kennedy is a great person to run the company. I think J.J. Abrams, while not my first choice, was a great choice to take over this first film of this new trilogy without the creator, George Lucas, involved anymore. So it needs to be said that at the end of the day, I do still believe in the film. I believe in Lucasfilm. I believe in Kathleen Kennedy. I believe in the producers. And I believe in J.J. Abrams. So I think that Episode Seven and the new trilogy films will deliver regardless of the title, regardless of Disney, and regardless of all these other factors. Lucas is involved a little bit still, and that's like all I need to hear from my nerdy heart to feel at ease. Um, and so here we are now today with this recent reveal finally of the title, just a week after wrapping principal photography on episode 7. Um, again, it's called The Force Awakens, and as a title in and of itself, it's okay. You know, I, I feel like we're at the point where, you know, it probably wasn't going to make everybody happy no matter what it was called. It could have been called I Love You All and everyone would have been like, that's stupid. Like, there's no real perfect answer with these things. It's one of those things where it's always shocking. And I, I was prepared for this whenever we would hear this title. It was going to be shocking and we wouldn't know how we feel about it. And it's just a matter of getting used to the title. And this is what this new Star Wars film is going to be called. Just like when every single previous film came out, you know. Um... Eventually, it will probably become second nature, and we will just know of it and consider it as The Force Awakens. You know, it's the seventh, the seventh film in the saga. It's The Force Awakens. That's what it is. So, you know, in reminding myself that I still think of the couple issues that I have with it, the biggest issue is another kind of scenario that really still remains to be seen, which is how does it relate to the story and this arc of the story and what characters are going to be going through in this film and setting up the, net, the entire trilogy. You know, the idea of The Force Awakening both seems silly and both could be very appropriate. Um, here, here, but before I even get into that, the, the problem I do have with the title, you know, is the fact that it kind of... I'm worried that, especially with Disney involved... I'm worried that they kind of just went with something that sounds cool. Like, it's a Star Wars film, and Star Wars is cool, so just throw some cool words in there. The Force. Uh, the Force is a cool thing for Star Wars, right? Okay, so it's a Force movie. They're at, okay, so they're just throwing this nebulous, cool-sounding title into the film, 
but that's all they're doing. What if it doesn't really have to do with the story? My worry is that it doesn't actually have to do with the story in the movie, but I don't think that's going to be the case because I don't think J.J. Abrams would allow that. He knows how to make a good Star Wars movie, I believe, and he knows how to make a good movie, so I'm hoping that that's not the case. So if it, if it relates to the story appropriately, like all previous six films do, what is that going to mean that, mean that it is titled The Force Awakens? Well, the Force has been awake for a while, right? So that's the whole silly thing about the idea of The Force Awakening. I mean, it's been around. In the prequel trilogy, we learned that that was the prime of the Jedi. The Jedi Council was a relevant piece to the way the Republic was operating, to Coruscant as the capital of the Republic, and to the everyday life of everyone in the galaxy. It's, it was, the Jedi Order was like almost like a protective division of that government. And that was great to see them kind of exist within that time before Revenge of the Sith and Order 66 changed all of that. So that was really, really cool. And at that time, the Force was a completely relevant. Now, here's what's really neat, is when you consider what the idea of the Force Awakens really means, is let's look at the order of events of the original trilogy, episodes 4, 5, and 6, which of course take place after the Jedi were destroyed, after Palpatine asked Darth Vader, Anakin Skywalker, to hunt down and destroy the Jedi, which is what he spends that 19-year gap between Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope doing. By the time A New Hope begins, the Jedi and the Force, they weren't dead, but they were dead in the minds of people, and they were dead in the sense that the, the, what, what Force-sensitive people existed and what Jedi were still remaining from the days of the prequel trilogy existed, they were in hiding. They were these rogue force sensitive people that maybe didn't know what to do with their powers and they were hiding because they know Darth Vader was hunting down and destroying and killing the Jedi, you know, as per order by Senator, by, or sorry, uh, yeah, by Senator Palpatine, Chancellor Palpatine. Um, and so, you know, those people existed, but they didn't really exist. It was this thing, you know, very much like um, like the line mentioned by um, both one of the generals on the Death Star and also by uh, Han Solo. They refer to it as an ancient religion, a hokey religion. That is the idea of the Force come the, the original trilogy, episodes 4, 5, and 6. And part of what could be the brilliance of this new title is that we, we lead from A New Hope, which is then a new regaining of the Force and of the Jedi all the way to the end of that arc, which is where the Jedi returns, which is where Luke Skywalker comes back as the first actual Jedi in a very long time. It is the return of the Jedi, which is exactly what happens in that film. So we culminate the, the original trilogy in the returning of the Jedi, and then once those events are completed and Luke has survived and saved his friends and saved the galaxy and, and destroyed at least Palpatine and Darth Vader, what, does it, what happens next? Well, now... If he actually does work, and this would be something that they'd be borrowing from the Expanded Universe canon, George Lucas's canon, that they've decided to remove, but Luke does begin on Yavin 4, A New Jedi Order. That There's a whole series of the Expanded Universe lore and novels called The New Jedi Order. So, if they, they obviously can't do that exact idea because they removed that from canon, but if they borrow from that idea, then it's a different story. And if we really see Luke being the first true Jedi to come back to form, and he starts to work with other people, maybe even his kids, if that whole thing plays out, I mean, I can't imagine we're going to see Mara Jade, um, but if we saw something happen there where he has Scott, more Skywalker children, which he's going to need to, um, then, hey, it's like now the Force has awakened, and it starts to awaken within people, within the galaxy, within the minds of the people, and within other Force-sensitive folks throughout that galaxy and that universe, then the Force really will be awakening if they use whatever, whatever this gap between Return of the Jedi and the Force Awakens is now going to be. That whole time, what has Luke been doing as the first Jedi to come back within this 20, 30, 40 years, whatever that time ends up being? Um, and if a new Jedi Order had been create, recreated... Um, it could be really cool because it could actually deliver on the Force Awakens title. And that means the Force Awakens becomes appropriate. And it sounds silly and cheesy, but, I mean, they're all silly and cheesy, you know? I mean, look at, look at titles like, you know, Attack of the Clones, which I think is a great title, but it's cheesy, purposefully so, which is what makes it great, but it is goofy. And so maybe the Force Awakens could be that. I mean, I still have my doubts on the title. It really is going to depend on how it's relevant to the film. And my belief in the film is what makes me want to play the wait and see game with the title, The Force Awakens. Now, the last, last element of this, which a lot of people have talked about, is the fact that so far we don't have Episode 7 attached to this title. And that does bother me. That really, really bothers me. Um, 
we have, you know, a good friend of mine and my younger brother and a couple other folks we've talked, and a lot of people seem to feel like at some point they will finally reveal and say, yes, this is episode seven. This is part of the title. Um, I really hope so. You know, I, I, I agree with some of my buddies who say there's no way that they can just shun the naming convention of the last 30 years, 35 years, and of the last six films in the saga that this is a direct sequel to. They can't remove episode seven. They cannot have this last this next trilogy not be titled Episode 7, Episode 8, Episode 9. They need to. If anything, for at least these three films, because these three films, this final trilogy, while we know we're going to get Star Wars films for the next 20, 30, 50, 100 years or whatever, you know, um, they are still completing George Lucas's story. They're completing the story of the creator of this universe, you know, who blessed us with these characters and these worlds to, you know, dive into that have influenced all of culture and technology and everything that we do now today. We're finishing his story. He started this story for this final trilogy. He's still story consultant on this final trilogy. And it is also, this next film in particular is, like I said, a direct sequel to episode six. It is the seventh film in what has been six films. So it has to be Episode 7. It is, it is the seventh film. It is the sequel to 6. It is number 7. So I feel like it has to be considered and called Episode 7. Whether or not the studio or, you know, fucking Disney decides to do that or not, who knows? Disney, I love them. Aside from Star Wars, with Star Wars, they've kind of been a bunch of idiots, so I just don't know what they're going to do. Um, so I'm really nervous about that. If they don't title this Episode 7, huge mistake. Because in the Star Wars universe, even if the film is good, which is the most important part, the film just has to be good. But specifically with Star Wars, the titles do matter. More so than anything else. Like, they don't have to call Avengers 2 the Age of Ultron. They could call it whatever, and it's like, dumb title or not, it's not going to matter. But with Star Wars, the names are very, very particular. This is going back... You know, now, like I said, 35 years, these titles matter. They're so relevant to what's going on. They are meant to be episodic. They are meant to be hearkening back to the Seven Samurai and Buck Rogers and Flash Gordon and all these things, where these things were very important to what influenced George Lucas when he made these films, created this universe, and decided to make it serialized, you know, which is now very common and used by everybody nowadays. So, long story, not short as usual. I think episode seven and and nine and eight and nine are mandatory for these titles. This last trilogy needs to be called this. After the Lucas saga, the Lucas arc of nine films and nine episodes is done, and we've completed what I think is going to be the three generations of the Skywalker legacy. Do whatever you want after that. Then it's like you can drop the episode uh, Roman numerals. You can make all your fucking spin-off films. You can make, you know, other films and different elements of the universe. You've, uh, you know, you've removed expanded universe canon. Like, that's fine. As long as these last three films deliver the way they were meant to, the way George Lucas w designed them to, and we deliver on his promise, then I don't really care what happens after that. Believe it or not, Star Wars can do whatever it wants after, have to, and I'll still love it. But the, the nine film, nine arc Lucas saga, Skywalker legacy needs to be completed the way it's supposed to be. So as the huge Star Wars fan that I am, those are my thoughts and feelings. That's my, you know, my, my feelings on the title so far, just a couple of days after the reveal. Regardless of, you know, some of the trepidation I and a lot of people have, it's still exciting. It was great to get the title so soon after Principal Photography wrapped. And it's an exciting time we live in. And that's the most important thing I think that we should be attached our, attaching ourselves to. So... Anyway, that's it. Those are my feelings. You know, from a Super Star Wars fan, that's what I think about the new title for Episode 7, The Force Awakens. Some good, some bad. Well, I'm just going to have to wait and see, you know, on December 18th, 2015, when this film finally hits and the world is graced, blessed with the time we live in with a brand new Star Wars trilogy. So those are my thoughts. What do you guys think? Any Super Star Wars fans or even, you know, medium Star Wars fans out there? Lots to discuss and dissect when it comes to the new title, The Force Awakens. So what do you guys think? Thanks for tuning in to my first movie-related video on Rule of Two Review for that for year number two, which is really exciting. I hope you guys dug it. I hope you guys look forward to more video, uh, uh, movie-related videos and stuff in the future. Got some Marvel things to talk about pretty soon, too, so keep an eye out for that. Of course, keep an eye out for regular game capture footage videos and video game-related stuff. Um, so thanks for tuning in. Discuss Star Wars Episode Seven below, and I'll catch you guys on the next video for Rule of Two Review.